<laughs> yep, just had a little engine problem. Alright, so we're back with another top 10 style episode. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at the top 10 engine failures I've shared on this channel. Now, engine failures of any shape or form are pretty much inevitable in the paramotor world. If you do it enough, it's gonna happen. That's why we always keep it out somewhere we can ditch into if our engine is to fail. Every single one of these instances has a little bit of a story and a reason why the engine failed. So it's a really good learning experience all around. Before we get into the top 10 engine failures, if you are watching this video the day it comes out, Tuesday, August 11th, this is the final opportunity to get yourself entered into the Teamfly Halo giveaway of a lifetime. If you guys haven't been tuned in, we are giving away a fresh, shiny Scout Carbon Paramotor, the choice paramotor that I have been flying for the last five years, as well as training with my good friends at Team Fly Halo in the Salton Sea in February of 2021. If you wanna get entered into this giveaway, which I don't know why you wouldn't, the way to do it, all the links are right down in the description. Every purchase made on tuckergot.com with this sweet new merch gives you one entry to win. You also have to fill out the giveaway form, which is the second link in the description. Just fill that out once and you're good to go. Third, follow Team Fly Halo on Instagram. They're gonna be announcing the winner, first time anyone is ever gonna hear it, on August 14th, live on their Instagram. So make sure you're tuned in on the 14th to their Instagram to see if you've won. All right, so we're gonna take these on sequentially. This one goes back all the way to February of 2014. I'm flying my old Blackhawk and I had an interesting issue happen. Somehow, moisture got into my throttle cable and it was really, really cold at the time, so halfway through that flight, that moisture started to freeze. And I'm flying along and I realized that as I let off my throttle, it's not returning back to idle. So logically, the smart thing to do is just keep adding throttle to get a nice climb established. I got some altitude over the park. I was luckily right over my LZ and my kill switch luckily was still working. It hadn't failed. So I went ahead and killed my engine, made a nice spot landing back at the park. All right, moving on to October of 2014. I'm on the same exact setup and I was out in the morning. Nice, beautiful flight. I'm cruising around pretty far away from home. I'm actually sort of nearby the infamous McDonald's. And what I started to realize at this point was that I couldn't add throttle. I realized there was something wrong with my engine and it was bad enough that I couldn't really climb. I could almost just keep level. And I knew I was about 10 miles away from home and I shouldn't stretch it. If I had to climb over a tree row, I would have been screwed. So I picked a nice little street and this street happens to have zero power lines. So I set up for a landing, came in and landed on the street, made sure I wasn't gonna get hit by a car. And I just pulled over on the side of the street and luckily at the time, and I still do to this day, I keep enough tools to kind of pull apart a few things on my paramotor. So I took my airbox off, I took my carburetor off and I started looking inside my carburetor and I found that on this particular model of the carburetor, there's a little screen and that screen was almost completely filled with what looked like pocket lint. I remember I had my carburetor off and not really thinking, I blew right into the carburetor. And not only did it blow out the pocket lint, it blew out the screen. So this little piece of my carburetor landed somewhere in the street. Luckily I found it, made sure it was clean, put it back in my carburetor, sealed up the carburetor again, put everything back together, and then took off again in between cars. Okay. Yep, just had a little engine problem, so I'm gonna take off again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, on to number three. This one was pretty interesting. 
So I was flying in the Icarus race. It was the 1200 mile paramotor race. And somewhere around day four, I started to realize my engine wasn't acting right. And what happened was the clutch was starting to fail. So on the clutch, it's supposed to release so that when you go to idle, your prop stops spinning. It's a centrifugal clutch, but that wasn't happening. So as I went to idle, the propeller kept spinning with the engine. The problem was that when I tried to restart my engine, the pull starter isn't meant to handle the load of swinging that propeller around. So it was really sketchy trying to get my engine started and I'm in a race and I was afraid I'm gonna blow out my pull starter, something's gonna break, my clutch is gonna give out and I'm not gonna be able to complete this race. Here comes the most potentially dangerous part of this whole operation. Hmm. Come on, baby. You got this. Oh, making me nervous. There goes my wing. There she is. She's not happy, but she's doing it. I was as careful as I could be, and somehow I milked it to the very end. There were several times when I was trying to pull start it, and it just did not want to start. Luckily, I completed the entire race with my sketchy clutch, and I ended up shipping my motor in a box back home to New Jersey. When I got home, I took it apart, and I found that it didn't look as bad as it felt. The clutch was actually just kind of bowing, and it was causing a little friction and binding. It was an easy swap. I swapped out the clutch and she was good as gold. The other interesting thing was in this race, I was running pretty much 50% pump gas and 50% av gas, and I normally never run av gas. But what I found inside my cylinder was that the entire top of the piston was just lined with this yellow, nasty looking deposit. I assume this came from the lead in the av gas, so I had to do a really good cleaning of my engine once I got her back home. All right, on to the next one. We were back in New Jersey. My buddy Jeff and I went on a nice flight, doing a little cross country thing. Jeff and I were flying in close formation and all of a sudden I realized he was descending and I didn't really know why. And then I kind of put two and two together. He was committing to land in a field. I am fairly certain Jeff's motor just died. This is why you uh, practice spot landings. <laughs> Poor Jeff. Yeah, this is planted. You got it. You got it. You got it. Nicely done, Jeff. He thought about launching again, but it wasn't the best idea because there really wasn't any safe space to take off again without trudging through this farmer's field. My engine shut off. <laughs> Try not to damage the corn. Well, it looks like I had my first engine out. Tucker and I were just flying probably at about 1,500 feet over that ridge. For whatever reason, the engine decided to stop. So this was the nearest field to land in. Did my best not to damage any of the corn. It did actually start back up, so I'm not sure what caused the problem. We will check out a little closer. I didn't want to risk trying to take off again with the corn and traffic and everything else so we're gonna load it in the van mobile and head back to the park so I ended up rescuing Jeff picked him up in the van brought him back and at the end of the day we didn't really know exactly what happened but over time I think what we figured out was Jeff was wearing a hoodie and somehow very slim chance but it must have happened we think his hoodie worked its way back behind him and covered the air intake in the air box. The weird thing was after this happened, he restarted his motor and it ran perfectly fine for ever. Never had any issues after that. All right, this next one was pretty hilarious. So we went up to the viaduct, an epic flight. This was the very first time we flew there. It's a huge concrete bridge structure that you can fly around like five different pillars. I think it was Judson's second or third flight. He was like a brand new pilot and we were kind of pushing him into situations that most new pilots don't get into, but he was doing really good. He was flying around, staying high, being safe. 
And what ended up happening was Judson was flying a paramotor that had a fuel bladder. Now typically we have a fuel tank and you can use your phone to kind of get a reflection angle and see how much fuel you have left. The bladder doesn't really give you that opportunity and it's really hard to tell when you're gonna run out of fuel. Judson's just flying along and unknown to him, he runs out of fuel. What the heck? Judson have another motor out? Did he run out of fuel again? Obviously he was a brand new pilot, but he was being really responsible, flying nice and high. He had a good lawn to land in. So I ended up flying back to our LZ. I got in the van, picked Judson up on the side of the road, had a good laugh, and since then we kind of just figured, put a little more gas than you think you ever will need into the bladder because it's really hard to tell when it's gonna run out. He's alive! Twice in one day, how do you feel? Uh, I'm just pissed. <laughs> Dude, the funniest thing happened. This woman shows up, and the one you talk to, and she's like, he's out there like all alone. Do you want me to bring him gas? You want and me to do something even better? <laughs> yeah. He came by seven times. I was like, no, this isn't my job. Yes, I'm fine. Yes, I just ran out of gas. <laughs> yes, they're all from New Jersey. Like She came up and she's like, do you want me to bring him gas? Like, are you going to get him? And we're just all eating pizza. And we're like, yeah, we're going to get him. Your like, pizza? Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so this next one involved Judson again, but he didn't run out of gas. He was flying the same motor and we felt a little hiccup on the ground, but we quickly ruled it out to be a fuel air bubble. And the motor ran great after. We did lots of run-ups, felt it out, everything felt safe. So Judson takes off, climbs high above the park, still being cautious, getting altitude, being above his LZ. And sure enough, all of a sudden, the engine just shuts off, made kind of a horrible sound. He glides down for a spot landing and I went over and turned the propeller over and immediately felt that something inside the engine had blown up. Mayday, mayday, Judson down. That didn't sound right. What? That didn't sound right. Did you hear it get weird? Yeah, what did it sound like to you? It sounded like some kind of rattling, but then the throttle, the throttle got really mucky. Did you hear me going, like revving it? Yeah. That was like hitting full throttle and letting off. Ooh. <coughs> yeah, something's messed up inside it. Shit. Right there. Upon closer inspection, I brought the engine home, tore it apart, and it seemed as though the rings had somehow caught the exhaust port internally in the engine and just shredded and ripped everything up. So the top end of the engine needed to be rib built, but Judson did a good job once again, staying over in LZ, being safe, and putting it down when he had to. All right, on to the next one. Myself, Jeff, and Judson were on a little cross-country flight. We flew from one park to another. Turns out the winds were really bad at the second park. Oh, fuck. Turbulent. Hurry. I came in for a landing, got smacked with lots of rotor. Everyone else followed, and we were all kind of sketched out, like, whoa, that was crazy. Gnarly winds. Holy fuck. Well, that was a bit of a storm approach. I'm gonna text the guys and warn them because that was a little bit hairy. <laughs> a little sketch, eh? Did you see my landing? Dude, you were like hovering the whole way down. I like came down. That freaking car stopped yeah. right too. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna land on this car. Did you get... We decided to take off again to head back home. And I go up first and I see Jeff take off, start to climb. Winds are gnarly. And a few seconds after takeoff, his engine died. Oh, f He uh, went up and then came down kind of quick. I ended up flying all the way back home, getting the van, driving back to pick up both Jeff and Judson. By the time I got there, it was dark, but we had figured out what went wrong. The exhaust bracket that holds the silencer on apparently had departed Jeff's engine. So as he's climbing out, that goes through his propeller and shreds his propeller. Vibrations are crazy. He loses power and immediately knows he has to come back down. All right, on to the next one. This involved myself and another propeller explosion. That's one of the things about flying a paramotor. 
is that the propellers behind the engine so if anything falls off, whether it comes from your pocket or the engine, it's gonna explode your propeller more than likely. In this case, I had modified my paramotor to accept a smoke injector for my smoke system. In this particular case, I kind of rushed the install. I didn't do a good job of doing my riv nut and it popped out, put the injector through my propeller. I'm on a full climb and bam, I hear an explosion. Oh, fuck. That's not fucking good. The engine will kind of make thrust with a damaged propeller, but it vibrates so much that you only want to do that in the absolute worst case scenario. So I shut her down, came in for a landing. Oh, damn it. And it, it damaged my uh, lower frame piece too. Like it actually blew up. Well, it, I thought the exhaust cracked, but it, oh. it didn't. It was just the injector that came out. My rib nut wasn't in. So this next one, we were down in Florida, myself, Jacqueline, and Jeff. We were flying from a pretty cool site, but it was surrounded by marsh. And Jacqueline and I were on comms. We had seen Jeff, we were kind of keeping track of everyone, but then all of a sudden we realized we didn't see Jeff anymore. I hope Jeff didn't go down. Yeah, uh, I don't me too. Whatsoever. Yeah. That's the clip of us pulling Jeff out of a tree. I hope not. So it kind of felt a little suspicious, but we were like, ah, he'll be back by sunset. Sunset rolls around, Jeff's nowhere to be seen. We start to kind of get worried. I send him text messages, nothing's going through. I get no response. So it's after sunset and he should be around. So we're starting to get freaked out. I took off again to kind of go search. Maybe I could see if he crashed into a tree or if he crashed into the marsh. And I was just hoping he was okay. Luckily, when I got in the air, somehow my phone connected to internet again and I got in touch with Jeff. I called him and using his strobe that he turned on, I was able to locate where he was at. And we were in this big abandoned development kind of thing. So I found where Jeff was visually in the air and then I had to kind of relay that to visually on the ground and we drove through this maze and found Jeff. What had happened was something in his throttle connection just broke. So he was at cruise power or whatever and his throttle just let go and went to idle. There's nothing he could really do other than shut it down. He couldn't have control of his motor. So he landed safely out in the middle of nowhere and luckily didn't get attacked by a wild boar that was out there. Can we please go feed it trail mix? We need to rescue Jeff. Well, Jeff is that way. All right, so this final one was semi-recent. I was experimenting with a aftermarket exhaust on my paramotor. It was a big stainless steel exhaust, really chunky, looked beautiful. And one of the big advantages was I could put smoke directly in. It had a bung welded on from the factory. So I'm out testing this new exhaust, coincidentally at the Salton Sea, where one of you guys are gonna learn how to fly in February. And everything's going great. The exhaust is running well. Um, I'm up flying around, final climb of the day, and I'm at full power climbing. And as I roll off, I hear my engine does not sound right. It has that really crackly exhaust tone to it. Why doesn't it idle right? It's weird. So I'm like, yep, I think something broke. And sure enough, the exhaust had completely broken apart and I was basically straight piped at that point. The motor will still run kind of with that sort of issue, but it's just really loud and doesn't put out much power. All right, so that's my top 10 engine failures that I've had really on this channel and in general and friends and everything else. They don't happen often, but they happen often enough that you always wanna make sure you've got a safe spot to land. So just keep that in mind. Final reminder, be sure if you wanna get entered to win in the Team Fly Halo Scout Carbon Giveaway plus training extravaganza, make sure you get entered before midnight Eastern Standard Time tonight. I really appreciate all your guys' support and the recent merch drop, and I wish every single one of you guys could win, but there's only gonna be one winner, and we're gonna find out on the 14th. All right, with that, hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Till then, peace. Zzz.